I'm going to talk about uh, the, the last uh, module that I gave uh, uh, here at uh, Cardiff Metropolitan University, uh, which I recently joined in, uh, in January. And uh, I think it's interesting to talk about the methodology that I have adopted rather than, you know, just uh, showing the final outcome. And this idea of uh, the house in a situation of impermanence, actually, uh, I refer to refugee, and I completely agree with my colleague, uh, it's a very wide definition. I mean, refugees might be asylum seekers, might be um, strangers. I, I mean, uh, there is really uh, many nuances. And it's fantastic because my students, they emphasize at one point, uh, and I will tell you also who they included in the refugees list, uh, let's say. So um, what I thought uh, as a um, most important methodology is for rethinking the house in general, also, you know, after the, 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 the way we were forced to live due to COVID, was to start with uh, both uh, theoretical approach, historical example, so just to somehow invite them to reflect, because, you know, the students, they have this attitude to go immediately to the precedent, but without a proper, sometimes, understanding of the issue. And, uh, and so uh, this was our iconic image. I will uh, talk a bit uh, in a few seconds. Um, this is an excerpt from the assignment brief. So, in general, they had to design a prototypal housing project for refugees. This was just a 12 weeks module, so it was somehow a very short time. And uh, uh, it was important to consider this aspect of granting anyway a good living start and, uh, for, uh, for anybody forced to live elsewhere, but considering these categories, we, which were kind of tricky for them, temporary stability, so there is a strong dichotomy, eh? it's an oxymoron somehow, transitional permanence and forced uprooting, of course. So uh, I started uh, uh, in a very classical way, challenging the students asking, but what the word architecture means really? So, and uh, you know, you understood that I rely a lot of, uh, on etymology. So according to its etymology, uh, the word is composed by two ancient Greek terms, arche and uh, techne. So these have a specific meaning. Arche means uh, start, authority, principles, and moral values. Wow. Texture is, of course, anything relating to the technical part, so activity, manual making, constructing objects, building. So we found out that uh, doing architecture has several meanings, building moral values, creating authority, building principles. So in Greek philosophy, these principles were the good, the beautiful, and the right. This means that we must learn how to build moral values, principles at first, before starting to conceive the physicality of a building. And so this was the very first challenge and the, a new way of approaching uh, the, the issue of uh, designing in studio. And then I was asking them, what comes first, observation or knowledge? And according to Joseph Broski, first aesthetics, then ethics. But in the meaning of uh, aesthetics, again, uh, the ancient Greek uh, aesthetics come from the verb aisthanomai, which means to perceive through the mediation of senses. So what I wanted to teach the students is that we have to perceive the reality around us before starting to put any line uh, on, the, uh, on paper. So uh, the understanding, the observation and the casualties of the specific requirement in the designing process is the very first step. And then I started with something dating very <laughs> far. This is a, a wall layout of a Trojan house. So we are in the second millennium before Christ. In the second millennium before Christ, a space conceiver, I didn't know how to define the architect, but he was an architect, definitely, but I like space conceiver built a sort of modular house through the extensive use of parallel walls. 
why I was asking the students, you know. So the identification of the places passing through the double of parallel walls, though structurally possible, it was not the case to use the same wall. Thus, the type reveals the creation of spaces for the family members, and this is the megaron, so the very central part, but in its flexibility and independent units, also for the xenos, the stranger, who in the ancient Greek civilization was considered as sacred to be hosted. And then I told the students, well, nowadays the stranger can be each of us, not only the newcomers, not only those uh, uh, victims of a war or of, of an earthquake. And they understood this very well because some of the students they had to define the, the people target of their project, and some of the students identified in the homeless of Cardiff, in people, uh, citizen in the city with the sudden uh, money problems, as the new refugees. And I, I thought this was really a success. Then we started to reflect uh, on uh, some. Uh, specific theories of architects or philosophers. So the emergence of relations, this is Aldo Rossi, among things, more than the things themselves, always gives rise to new meanings. So this uh, uh, empowered the idea that we have to rethink the mutual relationships among the things, so the different elements constituting the city, in our case, for giving a new shape, a new idea to a possible type of houses. And then we spoke about this concept of nearness. So according to Heidegger, nearness, it seems, cannot be encountered directly. We succeeded in reaching it rather than by attending to what is near. Near to us are what we call things. But what is a thing? Man has so far given no more thoughts to the things as a thing that he has to nearness, meaning nearness not, doesn't mean something that is close to me and I can touch and I can recognize. For instance, uh, uh, I open a personal uh, um, issue. I am myself a victim of a major earthquake and uh, uh, it was uh, back in Italy. And my nearness is uh, the stone of my house, limestone, that I always carry with me. This is the nearest for, for me. So for these newcomers, we have to consider what is their nearness, which is something probably distancing in space, even distance in time, but it's present, it's here. And we have somehow to give a meaning in the conceiving the new house for those people. As Bruno Taut stated, the house for living which seems uh, uh, for the students, you know, the most easy architectural object to design, but actually, as Tao says, and it is the most co uh, complex, the house for living actually is the most immediate realm of human life. It's first and last product. So we can really uh, epitomize everything in the house for living. Gaston Bachelard, the Molusque motto would be, one must live to build one's house and not build one's house to live in. And uh, I like very much this image because uh, we call this animal in Italian the Paguro Bernardo. The Paguro Bernardo is always carrying his house and building his house. So it's something that uh, he is never detached for, from. And uh, it's an interesting interpretation, but it means also that the newcomers they absolutely must be involved in the process of uh, cre creating, a, at least a customizing, and we as an architect have the responsibility to give this chance. Gianni Vattimo, Italian philosopher, living comes before building. So uh, we cannot force uh, you know, our design according to the building necessities that we have, but we have to do a very in-depth analysis of what living means in our case. So a classic case of uh, what we can call alienation, Jacques Tati, uh, from the film Playtime. Monsieur Hulot arrives at one of the glass and steel buildings, uh, modernism, a lot of critics, for an important meeting, but gets 
lost in the maze of these squeezed rooms and offices. And this is somehow the concept that we have to avoid and we can find in any camps for these refugees. Uh, everything is um, anonymous, everything is the same, you know, and there is absolutely no respect for the dignity of the people. So, how do you make a home in the co context of uh, displacement? Because this is the key concept, displaced people. How is a sense of belonging maintained in the face of being confronted as other and out of place? For migrants and refugees, home is often a series of places, included, including those left behind. So, uh, and sometimes, in order to keep this sense of place, uh, the, the people subjected to displacement, they develop a collective sense of place. If we move a group of refugees coming from uh, Kiev, they will together remember the cathedral, the piazza, the important, you know, uh, buildings and features of the city. And this is uh, their identity in the moment they are elsewhere. So it is important to take these aspects into consideration. I showed the students this um, artwork installation by two uh, Italian artists, Gabriele and Marco d'Oltremare, which is titled The Zeno's Lies, referring to the Zeno paradox. I don't know if you know it. Uh, Zeno stated that uh, um, the distance is always infinite because if we take two points A and B, we can always find the middle, always find the middle. So it means that uh, you know, it's like uh, the, the, the situation of uh, having a displaced life. We keep on moving, but we never know when we arrive. So the art installation was uh, starting with this uh, module of a house, which was built uh, um, through mirror. I don't know if it is clear. And then there was a line crossing, I just took a selection of photos, but there were many, crossing the city and encountering, you know, several objects, episodes, environment, anything. And meanwhile, the, the idea was that this glass surface was absorbing the life and contouring. And uh, at one point, uh, there was a moment of, uh, you know, resting. And uh, the, 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 the little module with the wheels is not translucent anymore but at least it will continue, but it acquired, you know, some of the features that, uh, uh, that, uh, that we meet, uh, you know, during this uh, process of uh, moving. So before developing the, our design concept, we have to answer the question, where does it reside the human in habitation? Each individual must be put in the condition of stating, I dwell. Therefore, I am. Of course, uh, this is a paraphrasis of uh, Descartes. I dwell, the therefore I am. So my house represents my identity. Though it is transitional, it is ephemeral, it is one moment, but we have to grant the possibility or to the individual to be identified in the space that he, she dwells. So Gaston Bachelard, I should say the house shelter shelters daydreaming, the house protects a dreamer, the house allows one to dream in peace. But the house narrated by Gaston Bachelard was a poetic, evocative, but static house. Nowadays, we have to learn how to design a house that is a dynamic space that can accommodate everyone's inner interiority domestic space. We have to rethink the domestic geometry which qualifies home. And at this point, students were still very well confused. We could say that in the Anthropocene era, everything is inhabited. We have made the entire planet our own. But it is also true that with one click, the entire planet can enter our own. How do we consider this aspect, positive, negative? And uh, you know, I was somehow forcing the students to think and rethink this kind of concept without giving answer. Because I think that also, as educators, our uh, role is to pose good questions and then students, they have to find the answer. So then I gave a, a, the, an assignment where essentially 
uh, they had to decide to whom their module would have been destined. Uh, so reason somebody uh, decided for the Ukrainian refugees, somebody for the Syrian and uh, Turkish people hit by the recent earthquake, and uh, somebody put a, a special emphasis on the local uh, people with specific uh, problems. And uh, also, uh, because the, the module was very short, we couldn't have a proper uh, site plot for a site analysis, but I invited them to consider how to reinteract with the proper, proper environment, urban, natural, mixed, so which is the best location for placing your module, uh, a park of a charity or any institutions, even you know, a private garden for citizens who are willing to lend their land for hosting temporary these modules. We were reasoning on that. I invited them to do a concept map, which I found out that it, at least here it is called uh, bubble diagrams. <laughs> and so we were still reflecting. So I, I was really waiting them to start designing what is a home in a situation of impermanence. This is the question we must ponder beyond and before the house physical character, so to say, its design. Home could be a place where to safeguard the relationship between emotions and things. The fourth uprooting is the individual last judgment, and in what they bring with them lies the need to divide what is drawn from what's saved. What does it mean for us? It means possibly providing in our project a, spa a space for what is saved. And here, this is a interesting drawing by Han Sharun from the cycle of resistance where he was, you know, having this uh, um, warmly dreaming idea of putting a huge tent in Berlin for hosting under it uh, all the um, displaced people due to the war. But as we said, we have to target uh, in a more specific way according to these needs. So I started to use also concepts coming from our, uh, other ancient culture. For instance, the tokonoma, which is a fantastic uh, idea coming from Japanese culture, which uh, honestly, I, I don't know really, but uh, just uh, a few hints. So uh, the tokonoma is essentially a niche in a house where the family plays the most relevant object for the family itself. It could be uh, an art object, or it could be, you know, something in inherited from the past. Uh, so uh, I was stimulating students in thinking about a possible niche in these uh, small uh, modules for, for uh, keeping the, the, the memory of the nearness. Or another interesting concept, concept the uh, chaquet, which was used even by Le Corbusier, this is Le Lac Villa, 1922, for his parents, which is essentially just uh, using part of the building for framing um, a view, a panorama, something relevant which is in the distance. And by framing it, it qualifies you know, the, the, the quality of the building. So this means, of course, working with things which are already there. So it means observation, as hmm? Sanomai. And then I was uh, showing them, uh, you know, just uh, some sketches, uh, thinking about how the module could be adaptive or maybe modular, because of course, as a module, we have to consider the modularity for building it uh, or, you know, flexible. And then uh, I moved to the concept of uh, Sukkah, or the Sukkot feast, which is a, a very interesting Jewish feast, um, which is, a, you know, a, a feast for celebrating uh, when the, the Jewish left Egypt for 40 years, and they were somehow uh, protected by these temporary shelters. And so still nowadays, the Jews, for one week per, per year, they built this uh, very ephemeral uh, hut, we could say, and they um, eat there, their meals. And the meaning is that uh, understanding how also, uh, in, in, a, in a moment of uh, temporality, yes, 
we, uh, we can celebrate, we can live together, we can experience something together. Then I show some uh, historical examples showing evidence that uh, the refugee issue is not just a contemporary issue, but here we have uh, um, temporary huts uh, in, in uh, the main square of uh, L'Aquila, where the, there was a main earthquake in the past, or after the First World War, Margarete Schuteliotsky, she designed this uh, proto prototypical building with also the use of uh, um, um, urban gardens for uh, growings, or uh, Otto Bartning, the so-called Notkirchen, very interesting project. Just he designed the structure, this wooden structure, and then the building was completely with the rubble from the war, and the citizens were completing it, uh, with, of course, a very strong uh, uh, meaning. And then I also show the John Adok Rolling House. The simple mass of the building is complemented by symbolic elements. So I explained that it's very important to put uh, symbolism also in the house. And uh, as he stated, it is essential that the architect creates works, and I'm going to conclude, that, that are through are, uh, though provoking, sense provoking, and ultimately life provoking, or more precisely, life-giving to what appears to be, at first, inanimate materials. The architect enters into the social contract in the deepest sense. And indeed, that's why I like to define the architect, the form giver, in this way, interactively, plainly with the society. Just very briefly, I show you some examples of uh, the students' work. Uh, I don't go into detail, but uh, you see also the inspiration from nature's, the, the standardization for re, uh, replying, you know, uh, replicating, sorry, uh, the, the module. This is very interesting because Beatrice, uh, she decided to work for orphans coming from any kind of uh, destruction. So a specific module, uh, very joyful and playful uh, with a very flexible space uh, for orphans uh, who can live here also, uh, of course, uh, with uh, one or two adults. Or the open and closer, Joshua May, uh, this is the last slide, for Ukrainian family. And he was observing that uh, they, very often they, they have uh, uh, grandparents with them. And so he did a uh, uh, um, separated unit in a, in a house that actually, you know, it looks like uh, um, a small complex with this uh, L courtyard and the small units for a pa the parents, but very much connected also with the rest of the house, with the rest of the family. So targeting specific also the lifestyle of the Ukrainian families. Uh, I stop here because I know time is running. Thank you very much. Thank you.